Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and members of Missouri Synod Lutheran Churches from North Dakota and Minnesota. Jesus did these things for you too, you know. And he's still hard at work in your lives. He daily and richly forgives all of your sins, even your doubts, your fears. He hears you when you call to him, even if your faith in him hangs by a thread. And he will deliver you from every affliction. He's coming back to earth for you. And when he does, he will right every wrong and heal every hurt. He will. He is God. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Good morning, I'm Vicar Jason Kahn from Zion Lutheran Church in Bismarck. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament reading is written in Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 11. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? 
Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no farther and here shall your proud waves be stayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak as to children, widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter, verses 35 through 41. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. When I was younger, my favorite place to go for family vacations was the British Virgin Islands in the Caribbean. Sure, the sunsets were beautiful, the snorkeling was awesome, and I still dream about the all-you-can-eat breakfast buffets. But for me, Nothing could top the real, hardcore sailing. I mean, come on. Who wouldn't want to be a part of a sailing race called the Beer Can Regatta? Now, on one of our trips, my dad and I signed up for what's called an out-of-bounds excursion, which meant that we were able to sail on the open ocean where we normally weren't allowed to go. And it is crazy out there. The waves are at minimum half my height, and they get much bigger. We didn't have large boats either. Picture two 17-foot plastic pontoons with a tarp stretched tightly between them. Sitting on those boats out there felt more like a roller coaster than anything. And I admit I was a little nervous, but I was never afraid because my dad was with me. I knew that he was in complete control and that he would steer us safely back to shore. Even though the wind and the waves tossed and turned us about, 
I had nothing to fear with my dad watching over me. In today's gospel reading, we witness Jesus and his disciples sailing directly into a storm. I guess none of them bothered to check the forecast on their smartphones. Being in a boat during any storm is bad enough, but this was no ordinary storm. The Greek word used here actually translates to furious windstorm or even hurricane. And the boats that they used were not meant to withstand such weather. And so the waves start crashing against the boat and it's filling up with water and Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat and... Wait, what? The one person you would want awake during a storm is taking a nap in a sinking ship. And the disciples are terrified. Even the seasoned fishermen. They go to Jesus in an attempt to wake him, and their outcry reveals two things. One, they don't ask Jesus to help them, but rather they accuse him of being indifferent. Notice how the disciples do not say, teacher, do something, or teacher, save us. No, they yell at him, teacher, don't you care that we are dying? Now, two, they are certain that this is the end. They don't say, don't you care that we might die? The verb is clear. They believe it to be truth, to be fact. We are dying. They have no hope, no trust that Jesus will deliver them. They only see the size of the waves, the force of the wind, but not their Savior, who, although asleep, is right there with them. A sad truth about our existence is that we live in a violent, dangerous, hostile world with much to be afraid of. Wars and conflicts rage on in the Middle East and other parts of the world, and our own loved ones are sent out there to fight. You've probably heard of the kidnappings and other tragedies occurring in Mexico or other areas right now. Now, conflicts aside, there are actual hurricanes and terrible storms that still cause destruction. Hurricane Ian from September of last year is the third costliest weather disaster in recorded history. And who are we to try and stop something like that from happening? And then there's our own personal lives. Maybe you're afraid of losing your job. Maybe you worry about your child's safety especially when you're not around to protect them. Maybe you're even afraid of coming to church, to God's house. What will others think of you if they find out about the depths of your sin? Can God even forgive what you've done? Can he love who you are? Trouble will come. It is foolish to deny that. But when it does, do we faithfully cling to Jesus, asking for his mercy, trusting in his promises? Or do we yell at him and accuse him of sleeping like the disciples once did? We might say, don't you care, Jesus, about all of this death and pain? Don't you care that my life is falling apart? Don't you care that we are dying? All too often, you and I only see the size of the waves, the force of the wind, but not our Savior, who is right here with us. Let's return to the boat with the disciples. Their cry to Jesus lacks any faith, but he still hears it. The fierce storm around them wasn't enough to wake him up, but Jesus would not just roll over at his disciples' voice. And so he wakes up and he says, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. More shocking than that, however, he turns around and asks the disciples, why are you all afraid? Well, isn't that obvious? The boat was being destroyed. They had no chance of survival. But Jesus was with them, and he has power, authority, and control over all things. 
so they had no need to fear. The disciples don't understand that. Not yet. But Jesus does not act according to understanding. He acts in his own ways, in his own timing, so that his followers might have faith in him. Did the disciples understand who Jesus was when he walked on water before them? When he predicted his coming death and resurrection? When he carried a cross stained with his own blood up a hill and died on it? No, they didn't. But Jesus was in control of it all. He did these things for them so that they would believe that their salvation really had come for them even when all hope seemed lost. But he rose, triumphing over sin, death, and the power of the devil forever. That cross means not defeat, but victory. Not failure, but forgiveness. Not death, but new life. And Jesus dwelt among his disciples every step of the way, right there with them. Jesus did these things for you too, you know. And he's still hard at work in your lives. He daily and richly forgives all of your sins, even your doubts, your fears. He hears you when you call to him, even if your faith in him hangs by a thread. And he will deliver you from every affliction. He's coming back to earth for you. And when he does, he will right every wrong and heal every hurt. He will. He is God. That's all wonderful news, but where is Jesus right now? Is he asleep in the back? No, Jesus is not in the back, not on a boat, nor is he in a manger on the cross or even the tomb. Right now, Jesus rules from heaven as Lord of all, but he is also Emmanuel, God with us, God with you. Jesus is present among you in his word and promises, in his body and blood. And he has given you his Holy Spirit to claim you as his own and to strengthen your faith in him. So when trouble comes, and it will, cry out to him. Lay your burdens before him. You may not understand why some storms rage on, but Jesus has power over them. And he will answer you in his own way, in his own timing. He is in control. He is by your side. And he will safely steer you into eternal life. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you have nothing to fear because the Lord Jesus watches over you. He is with you in whatever season you find yourself in. And rest assured that he is stronger than whatever frightens or worries you. It might seem like he's dozing off from time to time, but he never takes a break from you and is always near. Nothing can change that. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please pray with me the prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by hearing God's word. If you are able to attend local services, I invite you to worship with our congregation. If you are in the Bismarck area, please join us at Zion Lutheran Church Sunday mornings at 8.30 and 10.45. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you, and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you again for joining us today, and have a blessed week in the Lord. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.